Hi there. My name's Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and in previous lectures in my class on guitar amplification and effects, we've been looking at solutions to the one-dimensional wave equation. Now, these solutions have a spatial aspect as indicated by the sign I'm writing here. I'm writing sine k pi over l, where l is the length of the string x, x is the position along the string, and they have a temporal aspect that has two components. I have alpha k sine k omega naught t, where omega naught is the fundamental frequency of the wave in radians per second, and I have beta k cosine k omega naught t. So y here indicates the displacement at a particular location x along the string. Now, the AK terms come from the initial conditions on the position of the string, and the beta K terms come from the initial conditions of the velocity of the string. Today, I want to focus on this first term here. So we're going to talk about position, and we're going to assume that the velocity is zero. Now, we defined GX as the position of the string at time equals zero. So that's our initial condition. And in one of our other lectures, we discovered a formula for the alpha k that was 2 over l integral from 0 to l of our initial condition times sine pi k over l x dx. So this is basically a Fourier series in time, and this is a Fourier analysis integral that happens to be customized for this particular special case of g0 equal gl, both of these equal to zero. So the string is fixed at the endpoints, and that's why this has this particular structure. All right, so I'm gonna try two different examples. In the first example, the string is going to have a triangular structure at its initial condition. Do 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 do. So it's going to go from 0 up to a height of 1 at a position L over 2. So here's position 0 and position L. This corresponds to plucking the string in the middle. In example 2, what we're going to do is we're going to do something that, okay, is admittedly a little bit dodgy. I'm going to have this be a sawtooth kind of shape, a ramp, and essentially it's going to go from 0 at 0 up to L, and then it's going to go up to 1 just before L and kind of snap back instantaneously to 0. Okay, this is, um, this is a dodgy thing that I'm doing here, and it's a trying to replicate the effect of plucking near the bridge of the guitar, which is going to give us a brighter sound compared to plucking in the middle of the string, which is going to give us a more mellow sound. So really what I'm emulating here is something that kind of looks more like this, but the mathematics of this is tricky and I don't feel like doing it. So what I'm doing here in example two is a rough approximation. The folks in the School of Mathematics probably would not be happy with me doing this, but whatever, it's rock and roll. Of course, the wave equation is linear, so this height of 1 here is kind of arbitrary. You can scale it to be whatever. All right, so the actual mathematical formula for example 2 isn't too terribly complicated. It's just going to be something like x over l for x between 0 but not including l. And here's the dodgy part. I'm going to say it's 0 for x equals l. Eh, this is really not legitimate, but let's try it anyway. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the integral going from 0 to l, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave out what's happening at l. That's not really legit, but I think it will make the appropriate point. I'm thinking about this as a limiting case of plucking near the bridge, so I'm not going to get into introducing direct delta functions or worrying about what's happening exactly at L or stuff like that. All right, for example one, the expression is going to be a little bit more complicated. Here I really have two meaningful parts. So I'll write something like x over L over 2. So I could write this as 2x over L, but I think it's a little clearer if you write it like this for x between 
0 and L over 2. And then I'll write L minus X over L over 2 for X between L over 2 and L. Notice I can use less than and equal in both places here. I can actually use it everywhere because everything matches up at these transition points. And you can pause the video for a moment, try plugging in L over 2 into these expressions and double check that this all works out. All right, so now we need to take our G's and plug them into this expression up here. So let me scroll down a little bit to make some room. So on the right, I'll write alpha K is equal to 2 over L integral from 0 to L X over L times sine k pi over l x dx. And that's pretty straightforward. And then on the left, I have to split this into two parts. So I'll have 2 over l integral from 0 to l over 2, this x over l over 2, my happy sine function here, plus 2 over l integral from 0 to l over 2. And then in here, I have l minus x over L over 2, sine k pi over L x dx. Wow, my handwriting is really terrible. It's times like this, I think I really should be using PowerPoint, but PowerPoint isn't as much fun. All right, so let me do the example on the right first, because the integral is the easiest. So I'll write 2 over L times the integral. And how should we do this integral? Well, we could integrate by parts, or we could just go ask Wolfram Alpha. Oh, great and mighty Wolfram Alpha, we seek thy great wisdom to integrate x over l times sine pi times k times x divided by l dx from x going from 0 to l. Let's see what it says. Ah, here we go. Okay, so double checking, this is the integral that we want. And there's something that Wolfram Alpha doesn't know that we do, which is that k is an integer. And sine pi of some integer is going to be 0. So this first term goes away. Now, the second term has pi k over pi squared k squared. So we'll wind up with L cosine pi k over pi k. OK, so let's see. I had minus L over pi k times cosine pi k. Let's see, so the L's will cancel, and I'm left with minus 2 over pi k. And notice something about this cosine here. So I'll have cosine 0, cosine pi, cosine 2 pi, cosine 3 pi, and so on. So this is basically just flipping between 1 and minus 1. So I can write this as minus 1 to the power of k. So the sine is flipping back and forth, but the magnitude is decreasing on the order of 1 over k. All right, so what about example 1, where we started with a triangular shape? Well, I'm going to do something I generally don't like to do, which is to say you do a bunch of stuff. You can type all of this into Wolfram Alpha. You can do integration by parts yourself. You do a soul-crushing amount of algebra. You make some simplifications based on the fact that you know that k is an integer. And you eventually wind up with this. You wind up with 8 sine pi k over l times x over pi squared k squared for odd k. And you wind up with 0 for even k. So notice a couple of interesting things. For the ramp kind of initial condition we looked at earlier, you get all of the harmonics. For the triangle initial condition where you pluck in the middle, you wind up with only the odd harmonics. The even harmonics are suppressed. Also notice that the harmonics for the triangular initial condition slope off on the order of 1 over k squared. So they decrease in amplitude much faster with k than we see in the case for that ramp initial condition. So that's why plucking in the middle of the string has a very different effect than plucking near the bridge. It provides a much more mellow sound. 
And this general principle applies to other kinds of instruments and techniques. For instance, the sol pont way of playing a violin, where you bow closer to the bridge, sounds fairly abrasive and metallic, whereas sol testo and the associated technique of flautando that Spitfire Audio made famous involves playing further away from the bridge over the fretboard, and this gives it a much more mellow flute-like quality.